Good afternoon. Uh, Caitlin uh, is my daughter. She was born completely normal. Um, and after six months, uh, she started having seizures. And um, these seizures also triggered her heart rate to go very fast. Uh, 233 beats per minute. So basically, after an hour, you have a heart attack and you die. Um, but luckily, there's a drug for it. <laughs> it's not too long. Anyway, um, yeah, and um, the seizures got worse. And um, they got worse and worse. And we were put on the wrong, uh, the wrong drug for Drave, which was Tegretol. Uh, that makes the seizures even worse. And uh, after a hellish time, uh, the doctor realised uh, she was on the wrong drug and uh, realised that she had Drave syndrome and we did the test. And so after having this perfect child and then the seizures and then um, we finally knew that our daughter would be um, pretty well buggered for the rest of her life. And um, we were told that she'd be moderately to severely retarded. Um, she had... She had a one in six chance of dying before the age of 18, and she would most likely die as a result of a tonic-clonic seizure that would kill her, or she would die in her sleep, or she would die from complications of seizures like uh, being un unable to swallow and uh, breathing in her food and um, all the rest. So we've gone through a whole lot of drugs. Uh, two drugs, three drugs didn't work. Uh, Topamax was the first drug that actually worked and gave us a seven-month break. So we are very grateful for Topamax uh, and its benefit uh, to us. It definitely saved a life. And we've been, we've been adding the other drugs to fiddle around and we've been improving. And she's got great neurologists, paediatric neurologists, uh, some of the best in Australia. And, um, you know, but she was getting worse. And uh, in the preceding four months before we tried the uh, cannabis medicine, uh, she went to hospital eight times. She had um, over 15 tonic-clonic seizures. But basically, she was being knocked out every day. She was uh, not enjoying her life. And as parents, we were terrified that she was going to die. <laughs> and anyway, so <laughs> we heard about this Charlotte figure in America, and. She has the same disease as, as Caitlin, Drave syndrome. It's very rare, it's one in 30,000. And we thought, if it's good enough for her, it's good enough for us. So I, I, I asked the uh, customs, I asked the uh, New South Wales police first, and they said, uh, they gave me a reply uh, in within 24 hours, a reply that didn't answer the question, which was, can I import CPD oil? And they said, uh, hash oil is illegal. Well, how's that an answer? But anyway. Uh, then I rang Federal Customs, the guy laughed at me, and I said, mate, it's life and death for me. Can you answer the question again? <laughs> and he did. He said, you got no chance. I rang the TGA. They said, um, you need to get an exemption from Schedule 9 from the New South Wales Health. I rang New South Wales Health. They said, uh, there's no ability to apply for a, an exemption at this stage. I said, well, you can take it out of Schedule 9. Well, they're not doing that. They rang me back again to tell me the same thing. We're not doing it. So. I realised I had to go illegal, so I did. I ordered it, and uh, it turned up. Thank goodness for customs. I'm using a uh, CBD oil product from uh, Scandinavia or Denmark. Uh, it's the best that I can see, and um, which is a different medicine to what you're using, Dave, because you're using the THCA tincture and uh, or the CBDA tincture, and um, it's really interesting and I'd love to see the trials done to see what's going to work uh, better or if there's a combination of the two. We've just got to wait a few years to find out what's the best way of doing it for our daughters. And what sort of results have you had? Well, straight away, um, the first night she slept really well and to give you an idea what she was doing beforehand, she was jerking every day, all the time. She was being knocked out just doing a, a non-convulsive seizure and that was sometimes transitioning into a tonic clinic, which is... Um, what you saw there, very violent. Uh, she goes blue, she can't breathe for a while. But she gets her breath back and and then obviously without the Sotolol, other heart drug, she, her heart goes super fast at the same time. But yeah, um, she was unable to sleep, she was jerking, she was hard, hard to wake up, she'd go zombie, what we call the zombies. And these were new seizure types which were developing uh, or getting worse in the four months before I tried the medicine. And then the very next day, she woke up fine. She walked around and we go, oh my God, I can't believe it, it worked. It would have broken my heart if it didn't work. 
But it worked, and um, we've been great ever since. Um, she had a uh, temperature of 39 degrees, and uh, we did take her down to the hospital. We didn't stay overnight. They let us go, and um, that's the first time she's been over 37 and a half degrees without having a full tonic-clonic seizure and without being having to give benzodiazepines and barbiturates, which knock her out, and she, she can't do anything for two days, but they've stopped the seizure. At least they stopped the seizure. Some kids don't get it stopped, even with the most powerful drugs in the world. And one day she had a two-and-a-half-hour seizure, and uh, that was really great to see the doctors freak out. I mean, i never seen a room full of white doctors, but they were all white. And they called the helicopter, and they were about to stick a tube down her throat and knock her out so bad that she couldn't breathe, which is essentially killing her. How old was and she um, when that happened? Oh, one, a little bit over one, maybe. And, um, and uh, the seizure stopped, and... Uh, it's, uh, it's been a rough ride, and I, and I know it doesn't work for everyone. I have seen the results from GW Pharma's uh, open label study, so it's not a, p a full study, but um, it seems to help about 50% of, of uh, Drave people, sufferers, and uh, unfortunately for the other 50%, maybe um, the tincture would work better. At what point did you start on the oil or on the tincture? I'm How not old? on the tincture, on the oil. On the yeah. oil, sorry. Um, um, how, and because ten, Caitlin's ten three. weeks ago, eleven weeks ago, and eleven weeks ago, and she's been fantastic ever since. And she's just turned three, is that right? Yes, yeah, she just turned three, and um, she she talks, she walks, she's um, she's just really happy. And she um, previous to going on the medicine, we would have scored her say a four out of ten. Uh, you know, it's hard to, to score these things, but four out of ten means she's going to hospital soon, sort of thing. And uh, ever since, she's been an eight out eight out of ten or a nine out of ten every day, and and we're just so happy. And seizure free. No, no tonic clonics, um, and um, she looks completely normal. I wish she was here now, but it's, it's very hot, and uh, hot days are triggers for seizures, so she's in the air conditioning. How are you sure that you're getting a regulated dose when essentially you're having to source it from a black market? Uh, yeah, well, it's not illegal where I buy it from. Uh, in their own country, uh, it's perfectly legal, but um, to import it into Australia, it's illegal, and we've just got to believe the company itself we have no other way of knowing what's in the product. I've asked um, testing companies in Australia to test and they never call me back. They never, they never um, get back to me. They just say, oh yeah, we'll have a look and we'll see. And they never call me back. I don't call them. It's illegal to test it anyway, I suppose. Were you concerned the first time I was you were absolutely about to concerned. administer I've, I've it because you feel like maybe they, you don't know what... They what's... might use acetone in, to extract it or they might use something else that I'm, I'm not aware of that might be Chinese. I'm going to pick on the Chinese. It might be uh, uh, polluted in some way. It might have heavy metals in it. Um, you know, we just don't know really, but I've got to believe the guy I'm buying it from uh, that, um, that, and I'm, I think some of the best is uh, Endoka, um, and um, I've just ordered it and bought it. I mean, h how can you go wrong when, you, when your kid is in your arms and um, seizing all the time? And um, it's, it's worth the risk, because drive A uh, children are, are terminally ill, essentially. Um, they're primed to die. If they don't have enough drugs, they will die. And uh, if, if, if CBD oil was taken away from Caitlin, she would, um, she would show sy symptoms straight away. And we've tried to reduce the dose a bit, and she starts jerking. OK, put it back up. You know, just a minor jerk. But I can tell that if she doesn't have CBD oil in her system, um, she's, uh, well, we just go back to uh, go back to the neurologist and say, what do we do next? Uh, it's not like we haven't increased all the drugs. I mean, she's on three drugs. We've increased the drugs. As she was getting worse, we increased the drugs. Uh, I reviewed her, and, and it's often the paediatric uh, neurologist says, um, which one do you want to increase? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, which one we already maxed out on? Uh, we can't oh, max geez. that one out anymore. Uh, do I increase the addictive one, the, the benzodiazepines? So they actually ask know. you that they question, me, do yeah. they? Well, you've got and, a choice. And what well, haven't you maxed out on? What sort of reaction have you had from them? Have you told very, them about the very oil? Very supportive. Um, they don't tell me to take the CBD oil, but I. Uh, so they know that you're taking the yep, CBD I told oil. Yeah, them straight away. And, and in what way are they supportive? Well, they just say, "Well, we know you're, you're doing the right thing for you. You're trying to do the right thing for your daughter, with the limited amount of knowledge that we have." As I say, uh, we don't know if it works because we haven't let anyone do any trials. I mean, and how can we know if it works if we don't do the trials? And have they asked to monitor her progress? Yes, they monitored her. Her paediatrician followed her up. Uh, we've telephoned him. We've seen him. And he's, and he's great. He, he, he's a very lovely man. And her, um, her, 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 her paediatric neurologist has uh, 
I've been reviewed. He said it was the best he'd ever seen it. And, uh, and does he want to know more about what you're using? Is he, is he curious to know more he knows, about the product? He knows what it is. And, uh, does, he, does he want a breakdown of it or its components? Or uh, I gave him the graph of um, CBD, a tiny bit of THC in it, and uh, uh, I've, I've got to believe the company uh, that sold it to me, what, the, what the, they gave me the graph. So I showed him. He was happy, and he's happy with the results. And... Um, uh, he's told me not to do anything, not to change the medicine, and uh, we're keeping going. So basically, if uh, if anyone did try to take the medicine off her, um, I would ha um, I would just ring up her neurologist, and um, he would say, "Give it back." <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> he would. He absolutely would. And I've asked four pediatric neurologists whether or not I should do it, and they, none of them said I shouldn't do it. They all said it might work. Well, it might just work. You've certainly had a different response from some of the other families. Um, I don't know if Cassie and Rhett Batten uh, are with us, but you certainly and I went, have that I experience. The, when I did the visit to the hospital and we didn't stay, and she's on the oil, they were, oh, oh yeah, we know you're on the cannabis, but uh, just don't tell us, you know. Yeah, we, but we're not going to give okay. it to you. You've got to give it to her. If you're here and you need to give it to her, you give it to her, but just don't ask the nurses to give it to her. And the doctors say, yeah, we know you're giving her cannabis, it's okay but they don't want to put it on the chart. I think there's a new directive going around. So just before I move on to David, um, just quickly, obviously there's been a lot of momentum this year, um, yep. and particularly in New South Wales, as you saw firsthand with the Premier, uh, and now they're talking about clinical trials, but children always seems to be that grey area or an area that uh, a lot of specialists and politicians and, and the like don't seem to, to want to step into. What are your thoughts on the clinical trials and, I guess, um, how expedient they should be? Uh, yep. Well, um, Obviously, if you've got a seizing child, you probably can't wait five years, or if you've got terminal cancer. So we, we couldn't wait and keep waiting and waiting and waiting. Um, and I'm, I'm so happy for, for Premier Mike Baird, who's done the right thing. And I'm, I'm so happy that Dan Haslam stood up. And I thought, if this fellow from Tamworth can stand up when he has terminal cancer, stand up for the rights of all Australians to access safe medicine, then I thought I'll jump up too. And everyone in my family said, please, please don't tell anyone you're giving your child cannabis. And I said, I'll tell everyone. And I told Peter Dutton, I told Gillian Skinner, I told the local state and federal members, and I told uh, Senator Nash, who should be here, and uh, she's apparently not. She's got better things to do. And um, I told everyone, because I knew they couldn't touch me. How can they hurt me more than making me watch my daughter die? They can't, and they can't put me in jail, and they can't take the medicine off me. That's the facts. They can turn up and take the medicine off me, and the very next day, I'll have more of it. And if I don't have more of it, she's going to go to hospital. And they can watch it on video. And when we do our own clinical trial, what happens when you don't take the neurologist's advice? When you remove the CBD suddenly, it's an anti-epileptic medicine. You cannot remove these things fast. And... Um, you know, I feel sorry for that poor lady who's had to come back to Australia and not give her son the medicine. I mean, that's awful. Don't be scared and order your seeds. Start growing. <laughs> Make your tincture. They can't... You cannot go to jail for doing the right thing, can you? <laughs> Maybe you can. Let's try it out, eh? <laughs> no, but look, don't be scared. Order the seeds. All my seeds have come straight through in the mail. Uh, all my oils come through in the mail. That's um, over 0.3 kilograms of Schedule 9. That's 25 years in jail. Nobody's turned up yet to arrest me. Uh, it's the federal police will arrest me, of course. Uh, there's no exemption from that, unfortunately, Helen. So um, I'm safe in New South Wales, sort of. <laughs>